All right, so I know discipline is a really, really hot topic right now, and discipline is preached as the key to getting the life that you want. I actually disagree entirely. It's not lack of discipline or being lazy that leads to failure. It's lack of vision or underlying motivation of what it is that you truly want. So you got to have goals that drive you with strong emotions and be painfully aware of the cost of an action should you choose not to go for it along with the gains present when you achieve your goal. So what is it actually making you? Usually this is where your goal makes you aware of how to attain a greater sense of purpose or fulfillment rather than just achievement. So the notion of requiring discipline to have the life that you desire only creates another barrier to entry that you convince yourself that if you had some of this, you'd be there, but perhaps you don't. So you need to work on discipline before you can achieve your goal and thusly your purpose. So basically it goes to inaction. I say bullcrap. Don't let the trap of discipline hold you back. When you know what it is that you want and why you want it, you're going to find yourself doing and taking action that looks very disciplined in nature to others and yet it won't feel like discipline to you at all. Simply because you're so motivated to move away from the current painful situation that you're in and towards the pleasure and fulfillment that you'll reach by committing these habits. Now the other problem with beliefs on, on discipline, um, this discipline mentality is simply that either you believe you don't have it and that you never uh, opt yourself in for making a change or you just try and hustle to make it work and you burn out because it wasn't motivated the same way. And that only reaffirms the shame that usually drives perfectionism and causes you to believe that you're just not good enough, disciplined enough, or just don't have what it takes like these other guys. So you miss out on fulfillment in life. What a shame. Focus on your why and be very clear on what you want and you'll never have a need for discipline again. So focusing um, focus on needing discipline when you don't know your why and you'll never take action. Um, or you'll just simply take actions that require hustle and grind mentality and that's most likely going to lead to burnout. So number one, get clear on what you want. Number two, determine why this is an absolute must to you and how painful it could be to not take action. Number three, determine the daily habits or actions that others who have achieved what you want have done and follow it as closely as possible. This is why coaches are so, so important to guide you because they've been where you want to go. They know the tools and the systems and they will guide you there rather than you fumbling your way through and changing things that are working because you get emotional. Number four, find accountability and support to ensure that when you forget or lose sight of your underlying motivation due to whatever stresses or emotions that they remind you and they don't want to, and that you don't want to let them down. That's an absolute key. So there's your key to overcoming the rules of discipline. Again, I've been working out and following so many discipline acts for nearly 20 years, and yet I'm one of the least disciplined people that you're ever going to meet. And the reason is, is because I am driven by my underlying motivation and I know the cost of me not working out or not staying to my fitness regimen. I don't like who I am when I'm not doing that. I feel worse about myself, I lack confidence, and when I do this, I can associate confidence and I can associate my better life and quality of life to these things. So for me, what happens is, is I do all of these things that appear to look like I'm disciplined simply because my motivation is brought on by heavy inspiration. So again, we're motivated by either being inspired or desperate. And I found myself desperate many, many years ago to make a change, to actually like who I was and what I saw in the mirror. And what happened was, is because I started off small, I built up these disciplines, these actions that look like discipline, and yet they're simply being driven by the underlying motivation for me to perform at a higher level so that I feel better about myself. But it ultimately comes down to avoiding the pain that I felt where I was and never wanting to return to that again. So again, don't settle for discipline and don't try and convince yourself that discipline is the key here. The real key is knowing your why, getting just truly acclimated with that and connected on such a deep level that literally nothing will stand in your way. And this is why Olympic athletes are able to do things that we see themselves or see them as such amazing disciplined characters that we don't have the capacity for, but something 
something deep within is driving them in, in, in such a way that allows them to do the things that we only dream that we'd be able to. But let me tell you something. If you get dialed in on your underlying motivation and you get dialed in on your why and know why you can never stay where you're currently at and why this is a must for you, let me tell you, you'll find yourself doing the things when it becomes that real that Olympic athletes are doing, but maybe for the thing that you want to do. So I challenge you to get serious, to find what your underlying motivation is. What is your why? Your why for living. Put purpose and passion back into your actions, and I promise you, you'll never need discipline ever again.